hello, 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 and welcome to Bonus Pod, the companion podcast of the MinMac Show. My name is Haley McLean, and I'm joined today by special guest Eric Silver. Hi, Eric. Hello. I'm so happy to be here. Do you want to maybe introduce yourself and talk about some of the shows you do? Absolutely. Well, uh, you might know me from Join the Party, which is the actual play Dungeons & Dragons slash tabletop RPG show that I do every week. Um, it's uh, For those of you who don't know, actual play is this wonderful genre where people play Dungeons & Dragons and other tabletop RPGs um, and like play them on a microphone to create a fiction story and kind of let the rules of the game pull you in one direction or another. Um, and it's really fun. It's something I've been doing for like seven years now. Oh, wow. Uh, and it, it's, it's been something we've, I've been digging into. But as related to that, I'm also the head of development at Multitude, which is a podcast collective studio and ad sales provider. Um, we're an independent thing just like MinMax. Uh, Super cool. It was wonderful being able to talk to Ben and really get in the nitty gritty about like membership and Patreon stuff and uh, podcast ad sales and stuff. I'm like, mmm, the, the th- it's delicious. I love the- I it. I in. it up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And he's prepared a presentation. All my other guests just come on here and they say, "What are you? What are you going to talk at me about, Haley?" Meanwhile, Eric comes on has a has a adorable PowerPoint presentation ready to go, raising the stakes. It's Canva, Haley. It's Canva. Canva's Let's give respect cute. to Canva, please. Canva is so <laughs> cute. Canva is the like really hot older sister of PowerPoint that <laughs> oh, <laughs> knows everything. Yeah. It's Aust- really popular hot Twitter. Australian cousin to PowerPoint. <laughs> I want to talk about my spicy take before, which is that <laughs> I didn't play Baldur's Gate 3 because I think the Forgotten Realms is boring. <laughs> Uh, I think that there's a the Forgotten Realms is really obsessed with like fantasy race science. I think they're obsessed with like drow enslaving humans a lot. Yeah. And it's just like it's so for what it what it is now, it feels like such bog standard fantasy as compared to like something a lot more like, you know, experimenting with the fantasy tropes. Do you think but, I that's, mean, that's also kind of, sorry. Do you think that's because you're no, so like so I'm a newbie booby D&D person. I've never played D&D. I, sure. w- I tried. I like tried to scruffle some friends together to do it. And never, no one was interested. I want to still want to play mm-hmm. in person with people. It's like I think that'd be so fun. Oh, you should. It's awesome. It's the best. Yeah. So it, because this was my introduction to it, it, is that why I'm like, wow, this is amazing. But if someone who's more experienced with like all the different D&D outside of just the Forgotten Realms is like, this is kind of Weenie Hut Jr. <laughs> version of, of that, like, what that world could do for a video game, so to speak. Well, I think that I would ask you a question is like, let's extrapolate it from Dungeons and Dragons. Did you, because I really wanted y'all to talk about it and you didn't. Did you think the world of the Forgotten Realms was interesting? Or you're just like, yeah, Dragonborn are tight. The tieflings, tieflings are hot. I was really intrigued by the first area, Act One's area, the forest. But that's, again, it's mm-hmm. kind of a forest, but it just felt very nostalgic yet. I haven't been here before and but in terms of like the characters and the cultures of the said characters interacting with the locations I was in it was kind of lacking that sort of okay here's how the land around us was influenced via the cultures of said races and whatever that happened to inhabit it and it was more kind of just a forest but I was just like wow I can do so much in the forest that I didn't really care that it lacked that maybe. And that's why Larian is very good at what they do. I, I think that that's when I, I thought about this thing. I'm like, Larian crushed it as a game. Like, they really did as much as possible to make, you know, character creation and, and do and figuring out everything you can do as possible. Like, that's interesting. But the Baldur's Gate license and the Dungeons & Dragons IP they used, I'm like, I'm so not interested in this. Like, I, I, I'll pass. I, I got it. I got it. And it's worth saying that it's like it really was bog standard fantasy because it was actually the Dungeons and Dragons setting of this guy named Ed Greenwood. Yeah. So let's talk about IP, IP lawyer. This guy (laughs) started playing Dungeons and Dragons in 1975. He then created the Forgotten Realms as his Dungeons and Dragons campaign setting for all of his friends. Yeah. And then – TSR, the company that that ran Dungeons and Dragons before, was like, "Oh man, we need a new setting. Uh, does anyone want to? Uh, what could we use?" And this guy was writing. This guy Ed Greenwood was writing into like their like fantasy uh, writing 
uh, journal called Dragon that TSR had, and they're like, "Oh man, that's that's so cool! Can we like can we use this?" And he sold all all of his stuff for five k and a Aww. promise to publish his novels. It makes more sense though because like TSR was a was a publishing company. Like, oh hell yeah, they're gonna publish my fantasy novels. That's awesome. And like he did, Ed Greenwood did really well, and he wrote kajillions of fantasy novels <laughs> set in the Forgotten Realms. And but he doesn't have any long term licensing, perpetual royalty rights or anything to do with Forgotten Realm. It's just like a five k lump sum. Thank you, and we'll publish this also as a secondary obligation. That's my understanding. Ah, oh, that's too bad. Yeah, e- it's even tough. a freaking zero point five percent royalty this far into it with all the stuff that's been going on could have been. I, I don't know so for much. sure, but I don't know if Hasbro would be doing what they're doing if that was the if they have to pay royalties to Ed Greenwood like that. Yeah. So even from the beginning here is that TSR, right, like I said, they were a publishing company, even though Greenwood turned his D&D campaign into IP and then Hasbro and they're trying to get sold back to us, that that is the definitive world in that Dungeons and Dragons can and should be set. That actually has nothing to do with what I'm doing at my table because I'm coming up with my own story and world. So it's like it just doesn't have anything to do with me. And I, I think that that's where Hasbro is getting over their skis a little bit as they're pivoting fully to IP creation as their entire company's like strategy. Okay, I see what you mean. Like so where the the fun of this IP outside of the scope of highly commercialized products is player creativity. You shouldn't be banking all your money on that because you're just making derivative works of something that you could potentially Omit a few details that, like a Hobbit word, like a whatever word, right. and make it your own original IP long term. Yeah. I think, yeah, exactly. But maybe someone would run up to me, like a Hasbro executive, and be like, well, what about Baldur's Gate 3? You're right. <laughs> Baldur's Gate 3 absolutely freaking crushed it. They absolutely they did an incredible job. And because Dungeons and & Dragons and Magic the Gathering were the two most profitable departments of Hasbro and like they have the Dungeon Dragons has never been more popular Magic the Gathering has never been more popular and they're making money and yet Hasbro laid off people around Christmas specifically from the D&D and Magic teams yeah uh there you're gonna hear this guy's name a lot CEO Chris Cox yep that's his real name great that's name. his real real name We are entering 2023, expecting a year of change, including significant updates to our leadership team, structure, and scope of operations. Vomit, vomit, vomit. What about with you, Chris? Does that include you, Chris? Oh, no, it doesn't. He (laughs) made $9 million. He he made $9 million last year. Don't worry, Haley. Don't worry. Frustrating. uh, And guess who got laid off? Oh, some of the people who worked on Baldur's Gate 3 from from the Wizard of the Coast side. This This is from... The Baldur's Gate three speech from the Game Awards when the guy was wearing uh, was wearing the suit of armor. He Iconic. said this. Yeah. He wanted to he thank he wanted to thank Wizards of the Coast and he said specifically because this happened after the layoffs. So my, I'm sorry, so many of you let go. It's a sad thing to realize that of all the people who were in the original meeting room, there's almost nobody left. I hope you all end well. Which is an absolute bummer and might be a problem because Baldur's Gate 3 takes six years to make. Yeah. So in the time from when it started to when they're finally making money off of this thing, yeah, massive hit, over 10 million per uh, copies sold. Even though it was a massive success, the company that licensed, the who li- who's licensed the D&D brand to Larian laid off the people who shepherded it through this area, even though that was what they, the, the whole money making scheme in the first place, which then it, just, money. it doesn't make any sense. If you like what I'm talking about here, I bring all I put my, my money where my mouth is with join the party and actual play podcast I've been doing for a very long time. I'm the best DM in podcasting, folks. I think about crit and then I apply it by doing fun stuff. Right now we are doing a world set a world of plant and bug people set in a fun pirate world. It's kind of like plants versus zombies and uh, Redwall meets One Piece. It has been so much oh fun to what do. A, what a pitch. <laughs> I li- It's been so much. Vertistello has been so much fun to be a part of. We have like a tea witch in there. We have a butterfly, a butterfly gunman. We have a, a uh, <laughs> what is Umbi? He's a, um, 
he's a pawpaw fruit who throws bombs. Absolutely <laughs> incredible. Cute. I've been enjoying it. I've been enjoying it so much. And if you like what I'm talking about, and especially Minnesota, Minneapolis, St. Paul, come out, but also Seattle, Chicago, New York City, Boston, DC, and Philly. If you like what I'm talking about, I'm gonna put that where my money where my mouth is during our live shows before join the party and spirits, which is a boozy dives into myths and legends. We're doing live shows and really cool stuff surrounding that. Amazing. And what specific day are you in Minneapolis? Maybe we'll shout that one out in particular. In case I will shout that one in particular. Yeah. If you want to find the tickets, you can go to jointhepartypod.com slash live, which is where I am for the Rolling Bones tour. We are in Minneapolis on March 22nd at Granada, Perfect. which is I hear is, is really, really fun. This was just a clip from our Patreon exclusive podcast called Bonus Pod. If you support MinMax on Patreon at the $5 tier, you unlock Bonus Pod each and every week. Haley McLean is joined by cohorts to talk about whatever they want. It's kind of the sister show, the companion show to the MinMax show podcast. So there's even more content in here. Also, we take calls from members of the community and we can really dive into the weeds on stuff. So if you want to more than double the amount of podcasts from MinMax every week, support MinMax on Patreon at the $5 tier. Thanks so much.